And I think they could market the shoe as, you know, we sell uh, fit first or whatever the, the slogan may be. and welcome back on the channel my name is Alex in today's review we have this shoe in this very iconic colorway I think that's what we can say it's already iconic once you've seen the colorway you can't really forget about it and it makes the shoe the company uh, you know already stepping into the the big names of the of the running shoe market it's the Speedland SL PDX uh, quick disclaimer this shoe was sent to me by Speedland for my review at no cost I'm not being paid for, do the, for doing the review, but still, um, it's important that for you to know it. And thank you, Speedland, for sending the shoe. When it was first announced, when it released, I was very excited because there's literally, you know, every piece of the shoe is innovative, is a new technology, and the whole shoe, the whole equipment, if you want to call it this, um, this is the way they call it. It's more in the, in the realm of equipment than in the realm of, of running shoes. Uh, although it is a running shoe. There's so much innovation on it, you know, it's a combination of different innovative technologies and just for that um, it's already very interesting. So I was quite excited. Now I have my hands on the shoe, I was able to measure it, so uh, very quickly the specs. This uh, size 11 uh, EU45 is 345 grams which, you know, you have the numbers on your screen, is quite a lot. It's, I think, the second or third heaviest shoe I measured. So it's heavy. It doesn't ride that heavy, but we'll come back to that in the, in the ride of the shoe. This is for the, for the weight in terms of width of the platform. We have something actually quite narrow. And I imagine this gives the shoe that agility that I experienced on the, on the trails with the shoe. It, it's, not, it's not a wide shoe. That being said, uh, and we'll come back to the fit, but despite being a narrow platform, the fit is actually quite generous, and especially in the forefoot in the toe box, it's a generous one, so um, no issues for people with very uh, wide forefoot. It will accommodate pretty much any fit, I imagine, but we'll come back to that in the, in the fit section of the video. And before doing the durometer score, drop, we have 28 millimeters in the heel, 23 in the forefoot, five millimeters drop, this is quite interesting because the two most recent shoes, um, trail running shoes I reviewed on the channel, the Esla Pulsar and the ASICS uh, Fujilite 2 are four for the Fujilite and six millimeters for the Pulsar, or is it the other way around? Any, in any event, you have the numbers on your screen, uh, but five millimeters, I think it's a good choice. You know how much I love six millimeters, but this actually feels very close. You know, one millimeter isn't a big deal. So I think five millimeters is a, is a good choice on this one. I will come back to that as well. Jeremy to score, very interesting. In terms of outsole, we're looking at the Michelin. Quite easy to say it in French because it's a French company. The Michelin outsole, it's at 63 on the Jeremy to scale. It's, I believe, harder than the number may suggest. Um, I think it's actually quite a you know sturdy, durable outsole and it's, it's hard. It's not a bad thing, but it's harder than the, the number may suggest. And very interesting, I was able to really measure the geometric score of the PIBA midsole because it's, you know, like raw PIBA, so you have access to it and I could measure it uh, with the geometric, uh, the geometric tool. And it measured at uh, 31 and a half, which is almost exactly the same number as PBAX on, um, you know, the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, which also comes with a PBAX uh, midsole. So same compound and, you know, it's maybe not used the same way. So maybe the compression uh, and other metrics would be different, but the durometer as measured here um, in the pain cave is the same number. So uh, quite interesting. Upper and fit, uh, the upper is the Dyneema uh, material, which is super resistant. And it's actually also very comfortable, which is, you know, a good combination between um, resistance, durability and comfort. So yeah, this is, this is for the material here. You have those straps, three straps out of a very um, nice fabric, which I can imagine is way less uh, durable and resistant than the Dyneema upper, uh, Dyneema material at least. 
Uh, but those straps are very important to get a perfect fit and also to work in combination with those um, BOA dials, BOA LI2 dials, which you have here, two of them. They allow you, um, but you will see also the, the footage to really, you know, uh, get the, the perfect fit uh, because A, you have two of them and they work in combination with those uh, three straps of sort of suede fabric. It's not really suede, but uh, fabric. And yeah, the, the whole upper works as, you know, a sock or that um, tongueless type of, of upper, which again allows for the perfect um, wrapping over the foot, over the feet. The heel, it's quite, you know, stout. Uh, it has a little bit of give to it. Very plush here with those bolsters on um, around the, the, the ankle, essentially. Fit is just amazing. I mean, they, you know, there are some shoes with good fits. This is next level. Um, I think this is mainly due to um, not necessarily the Dyneema material, which is, which is comfortable, but it doesn't do the whole thing. It's really the three straps and the bore dials, which allow you to get, I'm not going to call it the perfect fit, but it's, uh, you know, not too far from the perfect fit. So uh, kudos uh, to Speedland for, for you know getting uh, that type of uh, experience to the customer, to the runner. And I think they could market the shoe as, you know, we sell uh, fit first or whatever the, the slogan may be, but uh, they really have a fantastic, fantastic fit. And fit plays a big role in the ride of a shoe because when you have a, a secure fit, a nice fit, a comfortable fit, a good lockdown, you already have, you know, um, a good good chance to have a decent ride. And then if the midsole is good, then you can have a great ride. How is the midsole? Well, it's P-back. So it's, I wouldn't call it plush, but it's, it's comfortable. It's definitely, you know, cushioned, energetic. Uh, it has some rebound to it. It also has some flex if you remove the plate and we'll come back to that. And it also has attached to it with that uh, very, very clever system a Carbitex carbon fiber plate, which quite interestingly is, you can see here, quite flexible in one direction. And so in, in this direction, it's quite flexible if you bend it like this, but in the other direction, it's actually very, very rigid and um, it provides a fantastic propulsion. Very interesting technology, the Carbitex plates with those different, uh, different rigidities on the, the different um, sides, depending on how you, how you bend it. So you have the energetic propulsion, you have that, you know, um, strong tower face, but you also have some ground feel and that's thanks to um, the fact it's not too rigid in both directions. Very, very clever and the fact you can remove it, even more clever because you can really have a very Let's call it agile, energetic, almost like, you know, almost like those road races uh, where you really can push and get the energy return to the, you know, proportionate to what, to how um, much you push. Still, you can remove that plate and get way more flexibility, way more ground feel. So two different experiences. You're actually buying not just one shoe, you're actually buying sort of different, uh, you know, well, two different shoes, but different sort of experiences, depending on plated or not, and on which terrain you will be using it. I believe, you know, you can really have 10, 20 different experiences with this shoe, depending on where you live, uh, what types of uh, trail you run in. So uh, you really buy an experience. And it's important because, you know, we'll come back to the price, but I think it's, it's good to keep in mind that you, you're buying more than just a shoe with this. I was very pleased with the ride. Again, the shoe is heavy, 345 grams in my size, US 11, but it rides way lighter, like, you know, maybe not 200 grams like the s -Lab Pulsar, but 260 to 70. And I believe that's really because of that energetic foam, that very, you know, comfortable and agile type of ride. Again, agile is a word that com comes back very often in my, in my mouth. And I think that's, I, re I didn't really prepare for the, for the video, you know, I'm, I'm just saying what I have in my mind. And agile feels like a good word, energetic, agile, and versatile. It's, it's so versatile. I think you can really race almost cross-country races. Well, it's a bit, it's a bit maybe exaggerated, but uh, to give you an idea, I think you can really do that with the plates. And then you can also, you know, go on ultra trails, ultra distances. Hiking could be an option as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure you, you can do all sorts of hiking, but it really ranges from cross-country cross racing 
you know, very high speeds, uh, very technical terrains, or uh, not technical, but very muddy and demanding terrains up to, uh, you know, hiking, and it covers pretty much everything. I took the shoe at some faster paces. I didn't go very, very hard with them yet, but it's responsive, and I believe that's also thanks to the, the plate. Yeah, I mean, and when you combine such a good fit with a good uh, mitso experience, a good ride, I can only be pleased with the shoe. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, and that's the price point, $375. It's a lot of money. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of money. Now, let's keep in mind two things. First, Speedland is a new company and they released this shoe in a very limited number of um, units. You know, um, producing like a gigantic number of, of shoes like Nike, Adidas, whatever, takes the cost down a lot. And having limited units, limited production will, of course, increase the, the costs. That's the first thing. Second thing is the amount of technologies on this shoe is just huge and you know, uh, it has a cost. All those technologies are patented, are uh, researched, developed by uh, different companies and then assembled in that piece of equipment. It has a cost. Would I pay $375 for it? I actually believe I would. And I don't know if I need to be scared about it or if it's just like, you know, the, the reality and the trends. I think I would pay for it basically because it, it just covers so much and if I, could just keep one trail shoe, I would hesitate between this and maybe a couple other shoes, but this one would really be in contention and, uh, you know, it means actually quite a lot. Very quickly, before wrapping up the review, outsole is that Michelin outsole. You have um, cuttable lugs, six millimeters is what you get out of the box, stuck, and then you can cut them and get three millimeters I think I'm gonna keep them like this because where I'm running, it's, you know, muddy and I think it also makes the shoe a bit more durable because the, the lugs will, you know, be used and they will, you know, drop to five millimeters, four millimeters and then eventually to the three millimeters that I would get cutting them. So I'm gonna keep them like this. I'm not gonna most likely not um, cut the holes here to get some drainage, I don't need it. I have no experience with Michelin outsole, we had Continental, Goodyear, other uh, tires company, I have no experience with Michelin, in terms of shoes at least, in terms of tires for the, for the car I do, um, but I don't know what, um, what durability I can expect, I think it's very high durability, uh, at least based on you know, a couple of runs. That's what I I, uh, I can predict. This is it, guys. I think I will speak about this shoe again um, at least once, maybe you know twice in two other videos, because there's a lot to say about it, about the technologies, about um, what you know Speedland could do. If you guys at Speedland are listening to this, um, please keep on making shoes. That's um, you know a runner uh, asking this for other runners. Please keep on making shoes because. Eventually you will make more units and the shoe will become more affordable, which will be very, very uh, interesting for everyone. So keep on making them because it's, it's really a fantastic job here. And uh, I was very, very pleased to test it, to review it, and I'm gonna use it again and again. I'm very grateful for this. I hope you enjoyed the, the review, guys. I hope this was interesting. I hope you learned something. Enjoy your run today. Enjoy your ride. Go beyond your limits and, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.